here on facts over feelings y'all got to excuse me i'm in the middle of a love affair i'm in love with black people y'all excuse me i had my music going because black people you are my everything you're all that's on my mind you're all i want to be with the only kind that i want to hang around i know we're not perfect but i want you to know that i have fallen in love with you all over again and i'm just being honest enough to come before you and say black people i love you i know they hate you, but I love you for who you are, not for what you can give me, but just because you are all that you are by yourself. I can only do that because if I don't give praise to the most high, if I don't recognize that it is only because of the most high that we can have these talks, then I can't tell you enough how much I love each and every one of you, no matter what your age, shape, color. I don't care about that. If you're a melanated person, you know I love you. Black folks, somebody got to love on you. So y'all excuse me. I was Playing to you, I'm so I, I was in the middle of my love affair with black folks. But now that we back, you know, every time I get up on here and start talking to y'all, things just start happening. It's almost like they know what I said is true. If you don't tell them, I will, because I'm not a part of this. I don't have anything vested in this. I just want the truth. We want the truth. I know you want the truth. This is like, this is better than cable. It's more twists and turns to this shit than a miniseries. Y'all remember the miniseries? Y'all remember the miniseries? When we was growing up, they used to have the miniseries. Miniseries be on for like a week. And you couldn't, you know, you're trying to figure out how it's going to end and shit. You remember the miniseries? And when it was gone, that was it. It didn't come back on. It won't no TV show. It won't no reruns. That was it. Roots was a miniseries. Okay. It took them seven days to tell the story of how they supposedly jacked us up but this is better because this is reality Mm -hmm. so during the break (laughs) this is crazy during the break (laughs) this is crazy let me just go ahead and let you know i told you in the first half that they wasn't going to release nothing remember that was six hours ago he wasn't going to release nothing now, here we are a couple of hours later, and I don't got on here and started talking to my folks. And I was like, yo, yo, we got to tell you something. So y'all hold up. I got to let you know. Because <laughs> some people knew this and some people didn't. But um, another judge has ordered that all the radio call recordings from the police raid that led to the death of Breonna Taylor be released to her family as part of a wrongful death suit that's filed against the city of Louisville. So now the family is going to get all of the radio calls. Hmm. Now, for those of y'all who just tuned in because you're nosy and ain't been keeping up, you're not family. You just came here to try to hate because you don't like yourself. Taylor's a 26-year-old part EMT, part ER worker who was shot dead at her apartment on Springfield Avenue on March the 13th of this year. Uh, That happened during a botched no-knock search warrant that was served on the property. Jefferson Circuit Court Judge Judith McDonald Berkman, new name in the game. She made the ruling after an attorney for the family went back and argued that a close review of the recordings could help clarify some of the details. That's what I told y'all in the last one. Now, apparently, since the other judge that signed the warrant ain't got shit to say, they went and got another judge. And see, that's how it works. Y'all got to understand the system that you operate in. You have some flexibility in the whole system. I've been in situations where I didn't wait for it to go to court. I got smooth, got clean, threw a tie on, put on my motherfucking glass and slid my ass around to the district attorney's office and popped my head in to be like, hey. I'm John Johnson. What's happening? You got a case on me? Sure enough, I got something right here. Can I talk to you a minute? Well, what do you got? Go in there and lay your case out. They don't even have to go to court. You sit up in there and like, listen, bro, the blah, blah, the blah, blah, blah. I mean, I give you blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, God, I mean, I'll drop the charges on that. If you just, you willing to do that, I'm willing to do that. All right, come to court. The shit is dismissed. So they went and found the judge that would hear this. Okay, no, okay, yeah, you're right. You need to have that. Boom. Progress, y'all. Pressure. Pressure. Now, the attorneys for the city, they argue that the family's lawyers were engaging in what they call a fishing expedition. Really? A woman is dead, and you call it a fishing expedition? I hate to be the brother from New Jack City, but, oh, Benny, look at you now. You ain't got no charges, and I ain't got Brianna. So, see ya, and I wouldn't want to be ya. 
Billy no, no, ah! Y'all remember that scene? I always got mad because they never let show him hitting the water. He just fall and they go to another scene. <laughs> if this, if they made that today, as graphic as they are, he will fall, bounce off of a belt, a boat or something, and then hit the water. Okay, that's the comedy. So now they're gonna they're gonna release the phone calls. Hmm. When at first they said, nope, we're not going to do it. Oh, okay. Good evening. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Facts Over Feeling. Ring. They're releasing the records. Oh, okay. Let's move this along, y'all. <sighs> Man, I'm glad to report that. I feel a lot better because I was about to come back and finish di dishing out some more dirt. Why is that necessary when I was told that we would be doing things a different way? But... That's not the way it went. So let me move on. The next thing that I want to, to touch on real quick while we still got some time, because we're going to be here for about another hour, is what can they charge them with? For real. What can they charge them with? They can charge him with what I said before, a crime that's under Kentucky law known as wanton endangerment. Of the first degree, because there are two degrees. I'm going to explain what those are here in a second. But before I get to this this, this crime, because this is the only everything else they've done will protect him. If they overcharge him, if they give him the charges that we all been asking for, when I asked y'all in the last show, what in the last half, what crimes are y'all screaming out? Murder, uh, murder in the first degree, wrongful death. Y'all come with all of this criminal charges, right? If we're talking criminal charges. Then wanton endangerment, which is basically, you know, you just was reckless in the way that you did something and somebody died. Because, see, they're protected from all the other charges, because once they got the warrant, they're protected. They're just executing in the course of their job. That's what the law says. So that's why she had, they had to get the judge to sign. It. That's why the other judge don't want to say shit. OK, so they, that protect. But you can still charge him. With wanton endangerment. Okay, here's the problem. I looked that law up under Kentucky law because I wanted to see if found guilty, what's the maximum? Five years. Five years. So I'm reckless with something. I kill somebody. I'm just, I just all over the place with it. And five years, it is a felony. But five years, who wrote these laws? See, this is what I'm talking about when I told y'all to put your hands up out there in Louisville. And I said, if you can vote. Remember I said, put your hand up if you're a voting agent. I'll have everybody out there put their hand up. I said, you have the power to change the laws. Otherwise, this is going to happen again. A matter of fact, it probably already done happened before. And they just covered it up. This one got out at the wrong time. Now everything out of control. The people are pissed off. We done found out there's some other crooked stuff going on. It's like pulling teeth just to get the evidence so we can move the case along. The goddamn black militia done rolled up in the town. Speaking of the black militia. Yeah, the black militia. Y'all are going to die when I tell you this next piece because I could not believe this when I heard it myself. Now, see, there, I told y'all there's a spirit of karma floating around the world. Didn't I tell you that? Didn't I tell you that, 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 that if you do something now, it's going to come out? Okay. So I knew everywhere that we go, now I'm talking to the NFAC. See, I already thought this out. I knew that no matter where we show our face, they ain't going to do nothing to us. They're going to wait until we leave and then they can go look at their laws and say, how did this happen? We supposed to have them in their place. They're not supposed to have that kind of bravery. They're not supposed How there was people on the phone calling the police like, isn't there something you can do about it? They like do about it. Motherfucker, we hosting this shit. We ain't trying to get sick of you. See how many. Anyway. They try to change the laws. In Stone Mountain. After we left. They started looking at the laws on granting permits. And who they could grant them to. 
Because obviously, now today I find out, and I don't know why I'm surprised, but I'm going to show you how karma works. Hey, Interfacey, you must have did something right. Because today, a panel of legal experts is warning the city of Louisville that it needs to take legal measures to prevent further action by militia groups, including right wing militias such as the Three Percenters and the NFAC, a new national black militia. I'm reading you this out of the newspaper, folks. Quote, this is not protest in America said Mary McCord. Who the fuck are you to decide what a protest looks like? I'm sorry, it sounds like you infringing on my First Amendment rights. Backed up by my Second Amendment rights, Ms. McCord. You can't define what protests look like. Who the fuck you think you is? That is got, see, that's what I'm talking about when we're talking about this white privilege, this white superiority bullshit. That you think that you can lower it over people and tell them how they're supposed to act and how they're supposed to express themselves. Who the hell do you think you are? You ain't got nobody out here trying to kiss your ass, trying to get no money from none of these other people that's taking contributions. I'm a pure black agency with pure black people speaking from a pure black perspective. You must be out your rabbit ass mind to sit there and tell me that that's not how I protest. Oh, I guess as long as I'm holding signs and bringing rainbows and shit, that's all right with you, huh? How many times have I told you we're not protesters? We're not demonstrators. We are a militia. So let me continue, because I'm glad we said that. She then goes on to say, because first of all, let me tell you who this woman is. I told y'all don't let them out the house, but they out. McCord is the legal director of Georgetown University Institute for Constitutional Advocacy and Protection, the ICAP, which helped advise the city of Charlottesville in preventing militia groups from returning after the 2017 Unite the Right rally, which y'all remember that. That's when they ran over a motherfucker with a car and they was out there fighting and tearing up shit. She trying to put our appearance on that level. Like we came in shooting up shit woo and burning shit and flipping shit over. You got us fucked up, Miss McCord. You should have never let this come to my attention. You picked the wrong group to target with this racist bullshit. But let me finish informing my people. Because I want y'all to all be informed too. Because apparently Mary McCord has slipped and bumped her head on the University of Georgetown. You are a school. You are a place for the school. You just advising. You don't make no motherfucking law. Are you out of your mind? Don't nobody see nothing wrong with this picture. White America don't. Because we scared the shit out of them. That's why they on here talking shit. That's why they running around now. Oh, they're a joke. You want us to be a joke. You want us to be untrained. But did you see the video of your militia? What they said? If we go around this corner, NFAC will wipe us out in seconds. Those are your people talking. So please. So for you to try to put something on the books, you can go suggest to them. Y'all need to change y'all laws. Guess what? If you can send a panel to talk to them, we can too. To emphasize our second, our right to practice the Second Amendment rights under the state law, unless you're going to change state law. And we know for a fact that Kentucky loves two things, bourbon and they goddamn guns. So you are not about to do no shit to them where you're going to take away their ability to assemble with weapons. You ain't going to do that shit. I like to see you. You think that we, 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 we're, we're not going to be your problem. White people are. So you need to think over what you're trying to say just because you got scared because you saw the black army come through. But we're going to get to that in a minute. Quote, unquote, this is what this woman said. She said, this is not a peaceful assertion of the First Amendment rights. This is not what we want to protect. This is reckless and it's dangerous. If you don't sit your white cowardly ass down. What you scared of? Y'all wasn't scared when y'all was raping, robbing, pillaging, and enslaving us. You ain't say that shit when they was kidnapping our people and coming over here and fucking up our families and turning up our damn culture. You ain't say that shit then. So don't say that shit now. Right-wing militia groups such as the Three Percenters have had a presence during protests over the police killing of Breonna Taylor. Some said they were there to pro provide security and protect property from protesters. Many came to Louisville on Saturday because they said they were concerned about the presence of the NFAC, a black militia. Notice they got to keep saying a black militia. They never say the three percenters a white militia. Look who's writing this shit. 
Yes, they're scared. And there's some scary shit going on right here. You might want to turn this off if you ain't come for the real shit tonight. Facts over feelings. They got to keep saying black militia. No, just say NFAC. It's cool. Meanwhile, many black protesters said they saw the NFAC as a protective presence from police and white supremacists. I'm going to read that line again because they in the very next line, they had to admit a little bit about what was going on. Meanwhile. Meaning at the same time, all this scary, they were there. Oh, my God, since he's writing from the scary side, they had to admit that if all you had to do was look across Fifth Street. Meanwhile, many black protesters said they saw the NFAC as a protective presence from the police and the white supremacists. Let me tell you what somebody told me the other day. They said this was the first time that they had ever been to a, been to a protest or whatever you want to call it, where the BLM was present because they was out there yelling and shit. Where the BLM was present, where nobody got tear gas, nobody got knocked upside the head. And they said it was because they knew that the NFAC was standing right there in the goddamn street with all those goddamn guns. So they didn't, they said, damn, we didn't get our ass kicked today. Somebody told that to me. I went, well, damn. But it says right here in the paper, in the white man's paper. Meanwhile, many black protesters said they saw the NFAC. If you at work, turn the shit up so your co-workers can get real annoyed. Meanwhile, many black protesters said they saw the NFAC as a protective presence from police and white supremacists. Why would the black people have to feel like they need to be protected from the police and the white supremacists? Shouldn't they just want to be afraid of the white supremacists? No, they're afraid of the police, too, which means there's always some shit going on in Louisville. The NFAC leader, John Grandmaster Jay Johnson, they just be doing my name any kind of way, called for answers in the Breonna Taylor investigation. He also urged residents to take up arms and threaten the city with violence if his demands were not met. I don't think I ever said no shit like that. I advised everybody to become responsible gun owners. That's what I said. Play back this speech. I said, how many of y'all can go out and buy yourself a gun? That's what I said. And then I said, if they don't do what you ask them to do, you got every right to burn this motherfucker to the ground. I didn't threaten no violence. I just told them what would happen. Never said I was going to do it. I'll be by standing by with a bucket of water trying to help them put shit out. <laughs> Facts over feelings. Anyway, then remember, this is the this is the media talking. I'm letting y'all see what the media is saying. This is what they're saying. They got to report some of the good. But I got to let y'all see how they're portraying this because I'm going somewhere with this. Notice they lifted up, the, they, they separated the blacks like there was no white folks out there that wasn't agreeing with the shit that we were saying. Because I was looking at someone standing there. See, they don't want to give us no credit. They don't want to give the black race no credit for standing up. They don't want, they are in denial that we're, that we're starting to get together. They really are. They acting like this shit is not happening. Black Lives Matter. I'm like, no, motherfucker, look over here and see what's happening. And if they didn't see it no other time, y'all seen the video, they saw it in Louisville. That's why they'd rather tell you about a shooting than tell you that 3,500 motherfucking black folks, all black folks, came and pulled up to get some answers because a sister got killed. We love you, Brianna. All eyes on Bri. Now, they said that McCord and this ICAP committee, they sent a letter to the Louisville mayor... <laughs> I'm sorry, this shit is funny to me because see, I know the backstory. Y'all send it to the mayor. The mayor, the mayor is two steps from going to jail, okay? That's all I gotta say about this shit. Anyway, they sent a letter to Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher and city leaders offering free legal assistance to help the city regulate private paramilitary activity. To regulate private paramilitary activity. What y'all out there doing? Running exercises through the streets, through the streets and shit? What we hiding in the bushes? Somebody got a radio on top of a building and shit? What we, we, we repelling down the side? What activities? Are we coming up through the sewer with a flashlight and shit? What are we doing? Is there target practice on a statue? What the fuck kind of paramilitary activities? What planet do you live on where somebody get this woman and put her back in her cave? Who, whose woman is this? Whose You know, 
I don't know how y'all gonna take this. Whether y'all gonna be cool or come out of a bag. But when it comes to where we at right now as a black race, let me say it to you like this. I came and talked to you and we can settle this like some gentlemen. Y'all know how it finishes. Oh, we can get into some gangster shit. Okay. And all of this that I'm seeing right here is nobody wants to get into no gangster shit. Okay. So transparency is what we asked for. Transparency is what we received. But this little action behind the scenes. So these people are going to take it upon themselves to go to Louisville to offer their assistance for free. They're, these people are lawyers. They're going to go and offer their assistance for free so they can show them how to stop us from coming back. Because they're afraid we're coming to their city next. But see, this is the kind of stuff y'all got to be aware of. That's why I'm making it public. So I'm talking to the leadership of Louisville. You let those people walk up in there and pull some shit like that and you're going to set off something that got nothing to do with us. You listen to those people. You still refuse to listen to the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the whole goddamn world is watching you. And if you put that kind of effort into that shit, but still we don't get no kind of justice in Breonna Taylor, that's not going to be a slap in the face. You took a shit in your hand and you hit us in the face with it. You figure out the rest. She went on to say it's wrong for the activity not to be challenged now by local officials, whether it's right wing activity or left wing activity. I don't know why y'all always try to put everything into a political play. I'm not the left nor right. I don't know what the fuck that is and I don't care. I know what's right and what's wrong. After the Unite the Route, the, the, after the Unite the Right rally, ICAP represented the city of Charlottesville and won several court orders preventing militia members from returning to the city in armed groups. That's interesting. I don't remember there being armed ones. I remember there being people walking around with tiki sticks and shit. But now you this is, again, infringing on our Second Amendment rights. So I can see something heading straight to the Supreme Court. Do y'all not recognize the gravity of what we're about to get into? If they pull some shit like that, I can assure you we will take that shit straight to the Supreme Court. And if they make a ruling like that at the Supreme Court level, it will affect every state. That means we can go anywhere. You really want to take that risk. Okay. Let me finish up my little story here so I can go ahead and get ready for that. So according to uh, McCord, a number of Kentucky laws prevent private paramilitary activity. There's one statute she cites that states no persons other than the Kentucky National Guard or Kentucky Active Militia shall associate together as an armed company or drill or parade with arms without permission from the governor. Let me help you out. You left out the other part of the law. I don't know where y'all white people like to take shit out of context to, to fit the text of your pretext of an argument. Let me go ahead and tell you what the part she left out. That law is only applicable if you're having a fucking parade. You left that part out. I thought I'd help you out. Now y'all come in here with some flimsy shit and we're going to challenge you on constitutional law. You don't go before the world court to petition for the liberation of your people as an ethno nation and not know something about the subjugate courts. We're not stupid over here. Not by a long shot. Now let's get back to this. You're starting to aggravate me. My people didn't come for that. They came to get this word. Y'all know what I mean? So listen to how they tried to explain getting around the Second Amendment. Furthermore, McCord said the Second Amendment does not prevent Kentucky from enforcing those laws. There's a notion of mythology out there about the Second Amendment, particularly in open carry states. That 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 means you can carry a weapon anytime for whatever purpose in any way, including as part of a militia. I'm sorry. That's exactly what the shit sound like that to me. But then she goes on to say, and that is exactly the opposite of what the Supreme Court has said. She said, referring to a 2008 major majority opinion of D.C. versus Heller, which reads the Second Amendment is not a, a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever and for whatsoever purpose. Now, do you see what she said? She didn't say that it was the ruling. It was an opinion. The court didn't write the ruling on it. Stop trying to do these Jedi mind tricks on us. We're going to fight you back and unpack you every time. In other words, I'm making y'all aware of this. 
and the mayor got the offer. Mm -hmm. A spokesperson for Fisher's office said his office had reached out to ICAP to schedule a discussion. The mayor is interested in exploring any effort that enhances our efforts to protect public safety while also preserving people's First Amendment rights to protest. Notice they didn't say anything about the Second Amendment. If the mayor is that stupid, then y'all in for a rough ride because this is this is a direct attack not only on the First Amendment rights, but also on our Second Amendment rights under Kentucky law. Now, let's find out what the Supreme Court got to say about that. want to make y'all aware so if they decide to pass some crazy ass law and we tie it up in court but before I go I told y'all this is the age of karma now that I don't depress the fuck out of you with what they trying to do I went and did some research on the ICAP because I wanted to know who these arrogant white people was they're the ones that are telling these people that you shouldn't let people get together in armed groups because that could be a, a it's violating the safety and it's all it's not protesting. It borders on terrorist groups. That's funny. But you're the same goddamn people who wrote taming the militias, building nation national guards in fractured Arab states. This is the guy that they use over in Iraq and Afghanistan to teach the people how to form their own militias and then calling them some type of a regulated militia power and then calling them National Guard units to overthrow the ruling regime. You wrote the book on this shit and then you got the nerve to turn around and come back and say to us that you're going to advise somebody how not to make it happen. I got a copy of the goddamn book right here. I couldn't believe this shit. I read all of it. I could. I said, well, wait a minute. You have the experts on how to growing roles of militias. Listen to what they say. I'm going to read some of this. It says some militias are tied to ruling parties and draw fighters directly from regime supporters. Others are made up of former rebel factions or detractors from terrorists and insurgent groups, and they often seek to retain their autonomy even as they grow loyalty and service to the state. So you mean to tell me you all wrote the book on this shit about how, I see why you jumped on this because you saw the NFAC and you saw how big they are and they're growing. It has the potential to become a threat. So you're trying to shut it down because in other countries, those are the people you normally go after and you empower them. And then the U.S. gives them weapons. And now overnight, they don't went from having M16 and AR15s and 38s and 308s. Now these motherfuckers rolling around with 50 cows and Bradleys and fucking M1A1 Abrams and fucking Apaches and shit. And y'all trying to figure out where they get stinger missiles from and hand grenades and flamethrowers, all kind of wicked shit. Because that's what you've done over there. And those are the people you do it to. So of course you're gonna try to tell them, mm, don't you don't you let them come back here? Y'all gotta shut that shit down. But you wrote the book on this. Ain't this a bitch? Well, well, well. So, Mr. Mayor, if you want to go ahead and, and, and enlist the services of the people who are responsible for the way that we assist so-called insurgents in other countries because they don't want to see the shit happen here in the United States to them, be my guest. But we're not stupid. Remember, this is chess, not checkers. Now, I've got that out the way. I want to spend a few minutes. <laughs> Doesn't this sound like deja vu? I want to spend a few minutes to talk about, um, well, I don't know how to get into this. Y'all. Yes, y'all. We got to talk about y'all for a second. Because I had somebody ask me, do you think that it's possible that we're really living in the last days, Jay. And I said, well, according to the scriptures, it looked that way. And he said, but, 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 but what, why don't you, I mean, why don't I feel like it? I said, well, because our people are in, we're sick. We're sick and, and we're infected. And we, we're infected with three things. And that's what's stopping us from actually walking in the time that we're in right now. And he said, well, what are they? I said, well, the first problem is that we, we as a people, we're, we're walking around acting like losers. We're acting like, you know, we can't do this. And it's too much work to do that. And we ain't going to win. And look what they're doing to us. And we're acting like losers. When it's already written that we win, we're not acting like we're on our way to victory. We're not acting like we know that we know that we know. We're acting like losers. 
And we're supposed to be the winners. Even when we start winning, we still acting like losers, attacking each other, all kind of shit. Arguing, people can't get over their differences without realizing, okay, fuck our difference. Let's just get behind this for a minute. Easy. That's the first thing that's infected us. The second thing that's infected us is we're afraid. People are actually afraid. They're afraid to leave their comfortable life. They're afraid to have to go somewhere and do the work of having to build something. They're afraid of having to start over. They're afraid. They're afraid of the anger that they, that they would face if we try to leave. They're, they're afraid. They're afraid of doing the work. And then you say, well, why are they afraid? Because they made us lazy. They have made the lifestyle we have now. We lazy as shit. When the last time a group of black people got together and built a city? When was the last time black people got together and did anything notable besides become customers? I own land. No, you're a customer. You don't own that. I got a new car. You don't own that. This is my house. No, you ain't. I got a new pair of shoes. We ain't make them. I just flew here. We, didn't, we don't own the airline. They just opened up a new store on the corner. There ain't no black people. You understand what I'm saying? So we done became lazy. And because we're lazy, now it's time for us to do something. We're scared. And the reason we're acting like we're scared because we've been brainwashing and thinking we're losers. We are not losers. We're the winners. And the sooner y'all snap out of it, we can get to winning. Because right now, we're moving in that direction. How do we get there? I keep talking about this every time I come on here. I'm going to keep beating it in your head until you get it. Some people say, well, we got to be unified. We need unity. I keep hearing everybody say that. Unity. I said you got to be unified, but I always tell you how to get there. Not unity just for the sake of unity, but unity for great achievements. Not one of which can be realized without it. In other words, we need to become unified. To achieve something that we cannot get any other way. The first great understanding should be that the unity we seek cannot be achieved by organization alone. Even an organization of seven million people will have no lasting basis for existence unless the total membership is mutually and individually involved in the activities which each person feels is important and beneficial. For the whole lifetime of the group. That's what y'all see when y'all see the interface. See, that's why they hate us. Because we're all focused on one goal. And we follow one directive. You don't realize how powerful that is. Until you actually try it. The second great understanding should be that economic activities that we undertake are so fundamental in any truly upward movement. We got to invest in ourselves. And I don't mean invest in your mom's business. I mean, we got to come together as a collective and invest in one thing and make it happen. <sighs> I myself find myself in a very interesting position right now because even though all eyes are on Bree, I still have my hands in other communities. I still have my voice in other, other lands right now with their own issues that are going on. I receive requests for help from different countries. I told you all pretty soon I'm going to leave. When I do, I would hope that some of you would find it not robbery to follow. Speaking of leaving, I will be leaving Instagram on August the 15th, that will be my last day on Instagram. Spread the word. August 15th, I go away here on Instagram. That is the last day. And there will be no more facts over feelings. There will be no more morning mentals on this platform. We've had enough of them and their failed alerts and their censorship. I will let you know where to go. So calm down. You can follow or you can stay here with the rest of these clowns. But um, I'm in an interesting situation right now, folks, because we as a, as a people, 
really need to get moving on what we're going to do. I saw that someone is having a reparation summit. I intend on attending that also. Uh, I am meeting with some of the, I, call, I, like the, I like the term chiefs. They're not politics, they're politicians. They're the chiefs that are over some of the, the nations in Africa that have reached out. I'm reaching back. We're building those relationships. I'd like to salute all of the other organizations in the United States that the NFAC is aligned with. Uh, the Huey Newton Gun Club, the uh, New Black Panthers uh, Gun Club, the Fred Hampton Gun Club, uh, the Black Riders, uh, and, and also uh, the, um, the Justice League and, and a few others. Um, sleep is for the rich. Thought I forgot about you, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And we keep growing. My overseas partners, you know, those in the Pan-African French resistance, my man, Kimi Sebi, honor to you and everyone else on the other side of the globe, um, we are still on the same mission. We just got some at-home battles to fight right now. We're trying to get justice for Breonna Taylor. That's what this is all about right now. That's our focus. Uh, Y'all stay tuned. I had to come back and hang out with you just for a couple more minutes. Uh, I wanted to give you those last developments. They trying to stop people from coming back down there. <laughs> I wonder why. Maybe they know something we don't. I hope not. Let's keep our fingers crossed, feet on the ground, head to the sky. Y'all know the routine. Y'all know if anything happens, I'll keep you updated right here on Facts Over Feelings. Join me for the morning mental tomorrow. Uh, I don't know where we're going to go with it, but I know we're going to go somewhere. This morning's morning mental, if you didn't, didn't catch it, it is available. These are now going straight to YouTube. You can go to my YouTube channel now to catch those. If you haven't been able to keep up with me, you can go to your, my YouTube channel now, and it is posted within the hour. You don't have to go to some other folks' channels, which I don't mind. I, I love the fact that I'm everywhere um, because people need to see this. People need to hear this word. For the children of the Most High. This is your time. You can feel the energy and you know that we're just trying to get everybody on one page and get everybody to, to, to be with us at this time. This is not a time to be fussing and fighting and hating on each other. I'm not hating on nobody because I know that karma comes around. What, go, what comes around goes around and I don't need that in my life. I know you don't need it in yours. So I'm going to bid you all a good night. Join me for facts over feelings. And I do want to say one last thing to the to the children that listen to me religiously. You're going to grow up one day and you're going to say, I watched that guy on what we used to call Instagram. And I remember him. And I remember one night he said to me, you are the future. We'll be long gone. You'll be the ones keeping our memories alive. And I want you to remember that if no one has told you today, if it's just been another day in the house while you was hoping that school would start, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it won't, but I'm, I know you guys are wishing for that. Remember that I said I love you. If no one's told you. If you need a hug, if I could give you a hug, I would. But to the little kings and queens out there, they're sitting there staring because they like the sound of my voice and they like the lessons that I teach. Remember, I'm not just guns in the streets. I'm also arms to wrap around you and someone to say that there's a black man out here that cares about your well-being. There's a black man out here that hopes that you too will get a chance to realize your dreams and that the tragedy that happened to Breonna Taylor, you won't have to worry about that at night. You all have a good night. As for everybody else, morning mental. You know I'm going to be there. Will you? All eyes on Bree. And I'll see y'all on the flip side.